Hi, I'm Nadine Piat from Healthy You, Healthy Love, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that's very close to my heart, that was inspired by listening to a podcast where Michelle Obama was being interviewed, and she shared something very beautiful and very open and candid about her relationship with Barack Obama. You see, many people see Michelle and Barack as this perfect couple. And the reality is every couple has their challenges. And Michelle recently wrote a book and this is what she wanted to share, the reality of life, the reality of her life, to dispel the myth about the perfect everything that she may have had or their perfect life. Now, this is not to say that they haven't got some amazing things that happen between them in their relationship, but she just wanted to be real and open and raw about life for herself, life in the White House, House and just about herself as a unique individual person who also has their own struggles. And what she shared in the podcast is that at one stage, her and Barack were really having some challenges and they went to therapy about it. And what was revealed in this therapy was something that every woman and man needs to know about if they want to have a really rock solid, devoted partnership with somebody. Now, before I share what this is with you, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell button to get notified of my next hot topic. Also, please take a moment to share this with a friend who you know is in need of some relationship support based on this topic. Also, please comment below. I'd love to hear from you and find out about you so I know how I can support you in the best way possible. <laughs> So what was this thing that Michelle Obama was struggling with with Barack? Well, what was revealed in their therapy sessions is that she was expecting Barack to fulfill her life in every way possible. What I gathered from the interview is that she'd really lost her sense of self within the relationship at one stage and she was wanting Barack to fulfill her, to validate her, to encourage her, to be there for her that was in a way unreasonable an expectation of another person that was too high. So the moral of the story is, how do you as a woman, as a unique individual, as a beautiful soul, look after herself in a way that allows a relationship to grow, that allows a man to come forwards and really love you in a healthy way and in a way that you can love your partner in a healthy way, that allows huge amount of bonding, respect for each other and allows for a sense of freedom in the relationship and confidence within ourselves so that we can actually build that deeper intimacy that we desire. Because a lot of the time, our deeper needs or neediness needs get in the way of us actually experiencing the very thing we want. And we can often blame somebody else for what is happening in a relationship when in actual fact, we need to go a little deeper within ourselves. So I'm about to share five reasons why this dynamic takes place in a relationship and how to change it. Number one is unrelenting needs. Now, I know we all have needs in a relationship, but I'm talking about the stuff that's unrelenting, that you know that you're grabbing for, that feels compulsive and it feels like it's never satisfied. Now, there are unhealthy relationships out there where your needs are not being met because the person really isn't capable of loving you the way that you need to be loved to feel safe and in a reasonable fashion, in a healthy fashion. However, I'm talking about if you're in a relationship with someone who is definitely trying to please you, who does work with you, who is invested in the relationship, and yet you still feel that your needs are never really met, then there is a good chance you're expecting somebody else to fulfill you in a way that you can only fulfill those voids, those insecurities. And it's really important and critical to recognize this because once we recognize this, we're able to change it. And most of us know when we're being needy and yet it's compulsive as I mentioned and when it's compulsive it's very hard to break the cycle. But if you can really get clear that this kind of needy energy and these unrelenting expectations are driving your partner away rather than bringing him closer, then you're able to change it. Because if you can really understand that having these kind of expectations for someone to fill your void is something that is impossible for someone else to do, that actually creates distance, not connection, 
then your value change, your priorities change. And therefore, it's that moment when you realize that you want this relationship to work, you love this person, you can recognize that they do make an effort, and therefore you realize it's time to take responsibility for these parts of you that seem to be never fulfilled by another. So if you catch yourself saying to a partner that he's not doing enough for you, if you're constantly asking for validation, if you're often complaining about things that really don't need to be complained about, if you're picking arguments or not picking your battles wisely, then there's a good chance that you're looking outside of yourself for another person to fulfill you. So if that's the case, please take a moment to really get clear on this. Now to help you with this, I have a fantastic free quiz that is going to reveal your romantic love block or if you have one so that you know how to change this kind of cycle. I reveal if you're experiencing one of the four romantic love syndromes and how to change it. And the link to that free quiz is right below in the description. Number two follows on for number one, which is he's not a unicorn. Now I know that we want our partner to be our everything, to fulfill us in every way possible. We want him to be our ultimate comedian, uh, someone who can make us beautiful meals perhaps, someone who's there financially perhaps, somebody who is so sexy and divine and amazingly passionate in every way that we love 24-7, someone who listens to us and is there for us every moment of every day when we have a problem or we just want to be heard. Now of course, all these things are wonderful traits in a relationship and of course you want a lot of these things regularly. However, when it comes to a long-term relationship, it's very important to know that your partner isn't capable of providing everything you need at every moment. So when you realize that 24 seven, your man isn't going to relate and act in exactly the way you want him to, then you take the pressure off the relationship and you know that perhaps sometimes you might need to reach out to a friend or a family member to support you sometimes in ways that your partner may not be able to at that very moment. It doesn't mean that he's not able to ever, it just might be that he also has some things going on in his life that don't allow him to be present for you in the way you would like at that very moment. And this kind of thing can change in a relationship. Things can go through cycles. We all have different things happening in our lives, whether it's work, whether it's other personal things, whether you've got kids and stuff is going on. And sometimes we just don't have the bandwidth to always be present in the way that we think we need someone to be or vice versa. And if you've been in this situation where you know that you want to support someone, but you just don't have the ability, or maybe it's not your forte, maybe you're just not as good at something, whether it is being funny in serious situations or whether it is being very insightful in a way that is very helpful. And sometimes it's not about finding somebody else to support us. It's about supporting ourselves in a better way. Sometimes we don't trust ourselves to work things out for ourselves when we know deep down the answers that we want or need or require. So this is obviously talking more about more intense or uh, stressful situations that you might be experiencing in your life that you want support with. But also on the other hand, how to add levity in your life at times. Is it getting out and doing things without your partner to add that play, that fun, whatever it is. So once again, don't expect your partner to be your everything all the time. If you feel like you need more play and your partner's not in a great place at that time or just not available or he's traveling or whatever it is, then get out and see your friends and do things that bring that joy into your life so that you're not putting that pressure on your partner. Which leads to number three, self-abandonment. So number three is self-abandonment, which really continues on from what I was just saying about doing stuff that brings you joy, seeing friends, doing activities that you love. So this is critical in a relationship. Many people end up resentful and miserable because they've forgotten to nurture their own interests. They've forgotten to keep learning that language that they wanted to learn or to keep learning or engaging in a sport or activity that they loved. Or simply, they stop seeing and investing in their friendships. They've given so much to the relationship. They've kind of burrowed themselves into this one dynamic. And what happens is, is the whole relationship suffers not only with yourself, with your partner because of that pressure, 
and also it creates distance and sometimes a bit of a strange dynamic between yourself and friendships. And then of course there are your own interests. So really make sure that you don't abandon yourself in a relationship. If you know that you're spending a lot of time in your relationship or expecting a lot from your relationship and feeling unfulfilled and also knowing that you're neglecting yourself because you know deep down when you're not looking after yourself properly and that you're looking outwards to feel good, then it's very important to really tune into that and make the changes required. And it's very liberating to be able to engage in the things that you love. It really actually allows the relationship to be more interesting again, because when you're off doing your own things, when you come back to the relationship, when you talk to your partner, you can share some new things. You're adding something new into the relationship where it's always just the two of you always doing things together, always expecting or requiring or relying on each other to fulfill each other in every way, then there's no newness. It becomes this very interesting dynamic that creates, as I mentioned earlier, pressure. And this pressure stops us from feeling truly alive and engaged. So if you recognize this in yourself, change it. The next point is number four, he's not a happy machine. You can't just put some money in the slot and all of a sudden he's gonna make your life happy. A relationship doesn't mean happiness. In fact, if you're not happy before you go into a relationship, chances are you're gonna bring all that stuff into the relationship and potentially create other issues in the relationship. No one can actually make us happy. It's like people who think that when they win an Oscar or they achieve X, Y, and Z in their business, that all of a sudden they're going to be happy. You'd be amazed how many people who think that money or achievement is gonna make them happy or a relationship is gonna make them happy realize that it isn't the case. So sure, a relationship can help add levity and play and intimacy, which can feel really good, but if you're not happy with yourself, then there's a good chance that you will allow also things in your relationship that aren't healthy for you, which creates more unhappiness, not more happiness. And it's a very, very, very huge expectation to put on someone for someone to actually do that for you, to make you happy. If you went into a relationship with a man and he said something like, oh, you make me so happy. Before you, I was so miserable. My life was terrible and being with you just adds so much more to my life. Now there's a part of you that would think, oh, that's amazing. I'm glad I have such an impact. And another part of you may think, oh God, that's a lot for me to live up to. And now I'm responsible for their happiness. It can feel like, as I said, pressure. And when people feel pressure in a relationship, it actually breaks down the relationship. So don't lean on your man to prop you up all the time. Learn to do that for yourself. Your happiness is within you. You can choose to be happy with your life any day, any moment, in a relationship, newly dating someone in a long-term relationship. You can choose happiness. You can choose to change your mindset to feel happy and fulfilled and worthy and good enough and all of that. So don't expect your partner to lift you up and make you feel worthy and validated and to try and heal all your insecurities and fears. That's a huge amount of expectation on someone which is unrealistic. The last point is number five, releasing the valve. Now in the last four points, this is going to help you release the valve, but it's very important to know how freeing it is for another person when you don't put that pressure on them. And that was what Michelle was saying, that they were having pressure in the relationship, Michelle and Barack, because she was just expecting a lot from him to fulfill her, to you know make her happy and so forth. So when we release that and we take on that responsibility for ourselves in a bigger way, then love can blossom, as I said. That love that you really want is able to flourish. Now what's really important to mention here is that fixes or the pleasers of this world do tend to attract and engage in relationships with people that do tend to want to be looked after, fixed and helped. But I've got to share something very important. This can only be sustained for a period of time because fixers and pleasers have got something going on inside of them that isn't healed themselves. And this can create a destructive kind of relationship. So sure, there are people that are more easily able to tolerate or have a higher capacity to support you. And yet, 
if it's relentless or unrelenting, then it really does still break down the relationship and it does create a dynamic that's very unhealthy. So I want you to be able to break free from this cycle so that you can finally experience true intimacy. And to help you with this, to help you to release this pressure, to help you feel really good about yourself and in your heart and empowered, my program, Unlock His Heart, is brilliant. I share a technique called the Fear Clash amongst many other very powerful techniques. And the Fear Clash really teaches you how to recognize your fears and insecurities and how to look after them in a way that doesn't trigger your partner's insecurities and fears. Because what happens in a relationship, if you're feeling a disconnect with your partner, then there's a good chance that your fears have triggered his fears and your fears are not being looked after by you which is creating more friction in the relationship so if you can really understand how the fear clash works and how to dissolve this to bring unity back into a partnership then you have the most amazing foundation for a long lasting passionate relationship so check out the link for unlock his heart right below in the description now before you go, of course, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to this channel and hit that bell button to get notified of my next topic. Also, please comment below and share with me how this video has helped you. Please share with a friend. I'm on Instagram now, so please do check that out at Nadine Piat. And please be sure to give this video the thumbs up. It's been such an honor to have you here with me. I hope these five tips have helped you to feel more empowered in your life and in your relationship. And I look forward to seeing you at my next video. Thank you.